Matico's September quarter were in line with estimates and the company's net sales surged 6.7%. To discuss the quarter gone by, joining us now is Sogata Gupta, the MD and CEO of, of Marico. Uh, Sogata, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my first question will have to do with volumes and the recovery and whether or not you are expecting a better second half going forward. How are you viewing you know, trade right now? And if you could also give us an idea uh, you know, in the kind of trends that you're witnessing for parachute, value-added hair oils, as well as Safola. So I think uh, we had a near normal quarter two. Having said that, I think there are certain stresses that continue in terms of, uh, I think, the wholesale uh, channel reset, because as, I, as you know, there is a bit of a flux that continues in wholesale, especially in certain regions like North and East. Uh, which is also having an effect, obviously, on rural sales because that's the indirect sales. Uh, there is some flux in CSD. So uh, having said that, I would say that uh, there would be near normal conditions in the second half and we should be able to continue to deliver 8 to 10% volume growth in the second half. There are two, I would say, tailwinds. I, it's a good thing that with the increase in minimum support prices, and the direct benefit transfer continuing. They are two positive news as far as rural consumption to grow. I think GST, uh, we have also now uh, passed on some of the benefits in terms of price reductions that will help. So I, I think it will be a near normal quarter. Having said that, I think long term or medium term, there'll be two changes, I believe. Uh, organized players with much more direct distribution will tend to have a competitive advantage. And also, I believe that in the case of unorganized players who are not complying now with the level playing field, I would think there will be some more market share consolidation amongst organized players. Shagata, I believe there were some cost pressures uh, in the second quarter in terms of Copra prices were also up on year on year basis. Just want to check what is the company doing to mitigate those cost pressures? What's the kind of margins that one can expect in the coming quarters? So if you really look at it, uh, as an organization, we always choose volume over short-term margins. We believe that uh, we wanted the situation to stabilize in the post-GST era. And we have, as you know, yes, there has been an 84% increase in Copra prices. We have taken a 10% hike. Is it enough? The answer is no. But I think we will, as an organization, we will continue to ensure that we continue to drive you know, volumes, double-digit volume growth and market share gain in most of the portfolio. I think this is a, a, a wonderful opportunity to do that, as I said, because organized players will have a level playing field. As far as margins are concerned, I think uh, Copra is a cyclical, uh, which normally is an 18-month inflation deflation cycle. So sometime during the next year, starting April, May, it will cool down. And therefore, as long as we maintain a threshold levels of 17 to 18% margin, we are happy as to maximize growth. So can we assume that Copra prices will settle or remain at these prices until we go into uh, April, as you suggested. In that case, uh, we do not expect any further depreciation in your margins on account of raw materials costs. See, I think, as I said, that we, we want to keep a threshold level of 17 to 18% margins. We want to maximize growth. And as I said, uh, as I said that we believe that the right margin to the consumer, given that there are opportunities, especially for rural consumption to grow up, is a good opportunity to maximize volumes. Uh, Sagata, I also had a question on uh, you know, potential price hikes in the second half of this financial year. You said that you want to concentrate on your volumes and perhaps also uh, build on your market share further. Uh, what does that do to pricing uh, on, on uh, several of your uh, uh, product ranges in the second half of this financial year? So I think the only pressure that can happen is crude going beyond a certain mark, you know, $60, $65. But uh, as an organization, I believe this is a good opportunity to mop up market share and get maximum, maximize volume. Uh, so I don't see any price increases happening because I think one of the things we must do is to get back consumption to the original levels. Uh, I think uh, if you really look at uh, one of the issues that has been facing the sector in the terms of rural consumption, I. I believe there are st 
certainly some strong stimuli which the government has given to boost uh, rural consumption. And therefore, I don't see any price increases happening in the next six months. Shankar, my last question to you. Uh, are the trade channels now functioning normally or there is still a bit of disruption that you're witnessing in the current quarter as well? I would think there are still some pockets uh, of wholesale where there are issues. As I said, therefore, I think the, it gives us the redu, you know, renewed impetus to continue to drive direct distribution and drive especially in rural and uh, you know, the mini metros or the smaller towns. And I think uh, and the issue is going to remain. And I think a long term, there could be a channel reset in terms of the dependence on wholesale for the sector will keep on coming down in the coming years. Okay, and a final question from my side would be your plans on distribution and perhaps uh, if you could give you an idea of your ad spends and marketing spends going into the second half as well. I think on distribution we are doing two things. I think uh, one is leveraging IT. I believe that IT and digital has significant potential to maximize distribution effectiveness. As far as uh, distribution expansion is concerned, we have a twin-pronged strategy. The first one in urban towns, in line with our new portfolio, we are under-indexed on chemist, cosmetic, uh, and food outlets, where we need to increase our distribution. And I think the post-GST has given us a fresh thrust, uh, a need for a fresh thrust to have direct rural distribution. I think we had done a rural uh, expansion in the last couple of years. We had put a stop to that, but I think post the GST uh, restructuring, I think it's important that we give a renewed thrust to expanding direct reach in rural. As regards the ad spends, I think uh, you have to look at like to like because uh, I would say that it will continue to remain in the 11 to 12 percent, but uh, given in the next couple of years with our renewed focus on innovation and premiumization of the portfolio, it might go 100 basis points higher over the next two to two to three years. All right, Shagata, we leave it at that note. All the best for the second half of this fiscal. That was the management of Marico. Clearly, GST implementation has not augured well for a lot of these companies. There has been a disruption in the trade channels, clearly highlighted by Shagata.